Hey everybody, it's Brock, Creative Director of Toys and Collectibles here at Mondo. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a new figure from our Masters of the Universe 1-6 scale figure collection. And our friend here today is Merman. If you've been collecting your line, you already recognize this sleeve right here. This is our bad guy sleeve that go, goes around our figures. Uh, good guys uh, have Castle Grayskull, bad guys have Snake Mountain. Uh, now just kind of a little fun fact, a lot of people love displaying this side front out, which is fine, it's yours. Once you get in your hands, you can do whatever you want. But this is actually the back of it. Um, I know people think because it's all centered and symmetrical-ish that it's the front, but this is actually the front. What we like doing here is having it kind of off kilter, a little bit like the gray skull, which isn't quite the full face. It's cut off in a little awkward way. I like that because you look at it, you're like, oh, I, I wish I wish I could do more with this and gets you really wanting to take the sleeve off. At least that's what my studies have shown, um, study of one, me. Packaging art by Florian Bertmer, as usual, and packaging design by Brent Ash. Um, again, keeping consistent with our, our line here with the, uh, with the kind of the line art on the front. Turning out of the back, you see Florian's full color art there. All the great um, kind of graphic design here that Brent did. I really, really, really begged him to make sure we had this kind of bluish green here because it's one of my favorite colors, um, but I really like that. I think it's a very handsome box. You can see here, we're looking at the, uh, the Mondo exclusive. Um, and what is exclusive about this piece? Well, let's get into it and see what's in there. All right, digging into the figure here. Let's look at what we got here. So there he is, reveal, figure reveal. And over here, as usual, we have our uh, Gray Skull crest along with the uh, character description, character profile. Um, and looking in here, got a lovely little merman. Now, the reason I wanted to start doing an unbox, we haven't done an unbox before um, with the toys or collectibles is because Merman is my absolute favorite. Uh, one of my favorite characters of all time in terms of uh, you know 80s pop culture, that sort of thing. And it was very important to me that, um, that we, very early on in the line of our master's line, that we get to Merman right away in case I died so I could die happy. Um, and here he is. Um, so depending on when you're watching this, uh, he's either getting ready to ship, has shipped, or is long sold out. Uh, but anyway, um, let's dig into our good friend, Merman. And here we have our plastic trays with all the wonderful stuff that Merman comes with. And um, for the exclusive, for the Mondo exclusive, he actually comes with two items. One is his alternate head, which was uh, designed by Phil Ramirez, or sc the sculptor who worked on this along with uh, Tommy Hodges, and also had some inspiration from uh, Dave Raposa and uh, kind of some, some original stuff along with some stuff inspired by other things here. And he also comes with the spear with the, with the crimson pearl in it, which is in the secondary tray, which we'll get to. Uh, but for now, let's bust this guy open. Let's start, I'm gonna walk you through some of the accessories in this and kind of let you know the kind of thought process that went into um, doing this figure, designing this figure, and how we kind of approach sculpting and all that kind of fun stuff. All right, so just kind of laying out uh, Merman here. Uh, when you take them off, just be carefully remove your plastic uh, protecting coverings there. You know, he's pretty sturdy, uh, but you know, as with anything that, uh, that costs as much, you don't want to be banging him around too much. And then the second tray here, we have, of course, the figure stand. Um, if this is your first Mondo figure, um, then you might note that our old logo there, now old, uh, is on there. And, um, and you take the stand right there. Click it on, there you go, lift that up. I always like to lift it up just right before this metal bar comes off, um, just in order to make sure you get the right height. Because then what you want to do is just put it right there between his legs, and then you just push down on the stand, and there you go. I'm putting him on the stand, I haven't really posed him yet. I want you to kind of, I'm gonna walk you through a few things before we uh, we kind of get into that. Um, but, uh, but there he is in all his glory. I'm gonna put him off to the side here, um, and kind of look at some of the different things that he comes with. So first off here, I want to kind of look at is the um, little hands fall out. That's okay. Um, one of the first things we look here is the is the vintage head. Now this is based on the original uh, vintage figure. Um, what's really fun about doing these kind of heads is you because we do them such a large scale. You really get to study what the original sculptors and designers did with these characters, and there's some just really really bizarre stuff. Um, with these, you know, just like everything from his strange little teeth to his kind of ears slash 
gill things and just these rings around his eyes. Just really, really cool stuff. And he, for some reason, he's got this kind of weird hair right there. And it just doesn't really make sense. But it, that's okay because it just looks so so cool. Um, so that's the, the the first head, the vintage head. And and what's what I like about these also is that, um, you know, people will often say like, oh, they look weird on the figure because the figure is sculpted so realistically, but the heads are so vintage. But I mean, that's kind of the fun of it. It's just, it's a really a good example of, of the old and the new put together. And depending on your sense of humor, uh, uh, you may like it or not. I happen to really like it. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so it's, it's to different people's tastes. Um, anyway, that's the, that's the vintage head. And here's the exclusive head. And uh, like the regular head, which I'll show you in just a moment here, this also has an articulated jaw. Um, I really like that his um, his kind of fin gill things here are almost like they're like like almost like crab leg or some sort of articulated kind of thing. I can imagine him underwater being able to move him as he picks up sonic radar or whatever he's doing underwater there. Um, it's a really really cool, well designed head. Um, it's just very it's a lot more intense, a lot more monstrous. Just very like he's staring you down and he's going to eat you, kill you, whatever he does. Um, I don't think Mermaid needs people, but we can pretend he does. That's what he's got these teeth for. All right, so when switching the heads, one of the important things to do is just make sure, you know, we, we try to do our best to make as much of this material soft as possible, but there are still some kind of pointy bits here. Luckily for his belt, this is pretty flexible. So I like to grab him usually by his waist, and then you want to grab him right here by the sides of his head here. Um, you just want to be careful of the teeth. Um, that are around here. I mean, they're they're you know even though this is a is plastic, it's still a little sharp here. Just want to make sure you don't you know hurt your little fingies there. Um, just pop it off like that. Simple enough. If you want to put an alternate head on, just go right there. One of the things uh, you know if you encounter it being a little difficult uh, popping on one of these heads, one of the tricks you can do is either uh, have some some hot water going and stick just the just the, the female joint uh, underneath the head into uh, into the hot water. Don't burn your fingers. Or one of my favorites is taking a blow dryer and keep it at a distance so you don't burn the plastic or your fingers and just blow the blow dryer right in that area. What that'll do is they'll soften it and then when you pop it on, it'll go on a lot easier. Um, these guys always need a little bit of waking up when they first come out of packaging. So, and then when you take off the head again, there you go, you switch out the head. All right, now I wanna focus in on the main head for the figure. I love this design. So this was designed a combination of Joe Allard and Emiliano Santa Lucia. Um, and it was just a based a bunch of different like influences. Obviously the original uh, figure uh, from the early 80s to the early 2000 uh, Four Horsemen design line to just kind of what I've always wanted to see Merman kind of look like. And, and I just really, really love him. He's got a little, little tiny little teeth in there. Um, and one of the cool things here, I don't know if you can see it on camera here, but you'll definitely be able to see it in person is we've done these eyes translucent with a white backing and we've painted the lens on top of it. So when you catch it, you see you can actually see behind it, it actually has a, a fun little, you know, kind of like an actual fish, fish eye um, happening there, um, which is kind of fun. Anyway, I just love this. This is such a fun design. I love the, the subtle shades of kind of those a little bit of a purpley kind of color in there and the orange around the eyes really pops and just you know he's got that green kind of bluish green in there and i just love this color like the design on the box um this kind of bluish greenish color um just one of my favorite colors of all time um then little purple hits there um yeah this is it this is just my 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 favorite look for the character um and this is what you know despite whatever head you might display with uh with your merman this is what he actually is in our weird mondo master universe canon if that makes any sense Yes, it does. Here's Merman's Trident. Um, this is kind of our take on it. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of fun stuff going on here with the seaweed wrapping and the cool little like Nautilus shell that's at the end there. Nautilus or conch, whatever that is. Um, just a just a spooky Turnian shell. It's like the spike at the end there. Another kind of shell here, and just all this kind of crustacean-looking armor here. I just love this design because it's like Merman is under the water. Pulling stuff together, forging it, you know, since they can't really have fire, um, unless it's volcanic activity, I guess, if you want to get scientific. But, you know, he's just pulling different stuff from the ocean and kind of clumping it all together into some cool weapon. And here we have his classic sword updated uh, for the modern era. Um, this is fun for me because it really gets to showcase that kind of... Um, shark tooth weapon here. Um, there's a lot of uh, Pacific Islanders that have weapons similar to this. This I think that's what this was originally inspired by, uh, the original design from the old figure. But this really shows like just like all these kind of shark teeth, 
or whatever you have in attorney, a shark like animal, and this is kind of almost like a almost like a the equivalent of like a mega, megalodon tooth right there, and then just the on the hilt here, the uh, the spikes there, and I just I just such a cool, deadly looking weapon. Um, and it's also, I don't know if you can see that there, it's just really like multi layered in there, it really gives you the, the the appearance of just tear you apart, whether you're above the water, underneath it. Love it. Here's one of the other exclusive pieces besides the alternate head. Uh, this is the spear that contains the uh, the Crimson Pearl from one of the episodes where Mermaid got it and used this to control a, a giant sea monster. Uh, we updated the, the, the spear a little bit because the, the one from the original cartoon was, was kind of plain. Um, this just has all kinds of fun detail from the wrappings here to this kind of reticulated blade going here, the serrated edge here. Really like that. Really cool piece, just fun and kind of a, a fun little nod without being direct to the uh, original show. All right, so you know, Merman comes with a with a with a bunch of different stuff, uh, different hands, different feet, um, a gun. But you know, looking, I just kind of want to spend a little bit more time, actually, just focused on him himself. Um, just all the fun details that went into to designing and sculpting this piece. Um, I just love the detail in the armor that just has all these like barnacles in there. It's just a lot of fun detail. Um, more shells built in there, and his little trinkets tied to his belt. This is actually a nod to one of the uh, original sketches of the character from back in the early 80s where he had almost like, it looked like kind of like almost like seaweed or something hanging off his belt. Um, we thought it'd be fun just to have it as if he just collects shiny things that he finds and just ties it to his belt. It's kind of a kind of a collector there. And then his, his back armor, which is my favorite. My favorite piece is right here, this carapace that goes off and it protects the back of his head. You can see here, it just has all these kind of like shark-like teeth there behind it, as if you took the jaw of it, and then he put it into this coral. Um, they kind of grew. That's how I imagine that he kind of grew this armor along with his people, and they just kind of customize it as they go along and put whatever they want into it. Um, and then they get a little, a few hitchhikers here and there at these barnacles, um, and just as he's just like super, super cool, super deadly fins. Everything about this figure just to me is just speaks like what I've always wanted as a kid for a man to look like. And now I want to show you what he looks like posed. All right, this is one of my favorite poses for any of these figures. Um, just just super dramatic, we call it the invisible tangerine. Uh, very heavy metal, uh, but just simple, easy way to get the figure looking nice and dramatic. Um, here he is, let's turn around here so you can kind of see all angles. You guys pose him how you want. Show us, uh, you know, tag us online uh, with how you pose him. Um, but if you want my two cents, what I like in a pose, I like having kind of different tangents, you know, feet, you know, usually I like to have the face facing the, the same way as, as the, as the front facing foot. It's a good way to kind of lock in the pose, get the arm, this arm going in one direction, this in the other, without it looking like he's flailing, just as if he's just kind of in motion. That's always kind of my favorite pose. Um, like he's kind of st stepping forward a little bit. Anyway, there he is. That's our merman. At the time of this recording, this exclusive is up for order. Um, he's shipping right now, and um, we still have a little bit left of the exclusive version, and as well as the regular version if you don't want the extra head and spear. I don't know why you wouldn't want them, because they're great. Yeah, so keep an eye on our site for more unboxings of toys, collectibles, records, posters, everything you can imagine um, from all the different creative directors there. Um, but this was ours. This is Merman. We're saying goodbye. Till next time.